Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. You didn't see me, did you? No. <laughs> oh. I but I couldn't get up high enough. I turned, and I, you were very close. Roger, Van Dam, it is Anzac 1, 2, and 3, you are clear on 1, Kilo 2, Alpha, on these two individuals, the ID. That was a, uh, quite a bit of fire there. Hey everybody, Kazmo here, welcome to the channel, and today I'm joined by Marundus and River. We're going to talk about movement and maneuver, really, um, talk about some techniques, uh, how to maneuver the aircraft in certain situations, so Marundus, take it away. Yeah, so the, really what we're going to do tonight is kind of bring back some old school stuff and talk a little bit about the operational environment and say coin scenario versus going all the way back old school uh, against a near peer threat such as uh, the Soviet threats or, or the Chinese or whomever where we're um, more worried about um, high tech systems such as radar and potentially IR man pads. So uh, some of this stuff is... Um, movement techniques and then associated TTPs, which is tactics, techniques, and procedures associated with that. And just kind of want to give people an overview of how formations are applied in the tactical scenario and uh, how they apply to operating at terrain flight altitudes. So with that, I guess the first thing we should do is kind of just define what terrain flight is. So uh, terrain flight for the U.S. Army is generally considered to be 200 feet AGL and below. So once you're above 200 feet, uh, you're, you're kind of just flying, but you're worried about hitting stuff at terrain flight altitudes. And then that's further subdivided into uh, a couple of subcategories. So at the lowest being nap of the earth flight, which I think everybody's probably heard of before, um, which is the most complex environment, and that's generally associated with altitudes from zero or skids on the ground to about 25 feet AHO or above the highest obstacle. Um, and then you would transition just above that to, uh, yeah, drawing some trees there, uh, transition uh, to the next level, which we would call contour flight. Um, so in NOE, let me take go back a step, in NOE the idea is you're using any and all terrain features, uh, including trees, buildings, whatever, to mask yourself uh, from observation and to provide both uh, cover and concealment. Cover being protection from hard objects such as bullets and concealment meaning you're not observable. So that's NOE flight, yeah, and I'll, I'll add on to what Brian's doing here. So we're, we're in this environment below that line, and you have to follow, you've got to, you're oftentimes flying below treetop level, I guess would be the simplest way to put it. And then we would have, uh, and this is me drawing now, um, we would have contour flight. So that's me in the red. So contour flight is associated uh, from, this is 25 feet, all the way up to 80 feet uh, AGL. And contour flight is basically you're just following the general contours of the earth, but you're staying above the really nasty stuff that can um, grab a helicopter, such as trees, wires, etc. So uh, the idea here is it affords a certain uh, flexibility and maneuverability, but it still provides some terrain masking. And then all the way up to the top of the terrain flight envelope, we have this area here, would be considered terrain flight. And the speeds associated with these down at NOE, we're going anywhere from zero to about 40 knots, no, really no faster, because you can't really see and avoid obstacles if you're going faster than that. Up to the contour envelope, where we're, where we're following the contours of the Earth, um, up to about 80 knots or so, and then above contour, uh, where you go higher than that and you don't have to worry about running into stuff, really it's V and E, so as fast as you want to go. And then to further uh, bring this, uh, to tie in a couple more concepts here, I'm going to bring in some formation flying. Um, so in NOE, so we have some things called movement techniques. So depending on the tactical situation, let's say we're starting at an assembly area and we're going to be traveling to a mission area. Uh, enemy contact at first when you're behind 
um, your own lines, we're at an assembly area. And this is our, this is our start where we're going to, um, where our helicopters are loggered, we do all our planning, etc. And in a operational environment, we may have a uh, forward line of troops or um, a passage line where you transition from friendly held territory to enemy held territory. We'll call that red square. That's our, our mission area. So traveling from our assembly area where we're not so concerned about enemy contact, uh, we don't necessarily have to use the terrain or terrain features to mask ourselves from observation or from weapon systems. So we can use uh, terrain flight and a technique called traveling where uh, multiple helicopters will take off and enter a formation and they will travel together at a constant airspeed and a constant altitude. So from the assembly area to, we'll call it a transition point, and it will depend on the situation, you can be in a relatively benign environment and travel. At some point, the AMC is going to make a decision to get into more of a tactical flight regime. So at that point, we would, tra we would uh, transition down into contour flight potentially, and then also maybe change our formation into something called traveling overwatch. So this is where you could go into from a station keeping type formation to a more flexible type formation where you could break the flight off into multiple uh, subflights and each one has their own objective area. And traveling overwatch is associated with contour flight where you would generally keep a constant airspeed but vary your altitude in consideration with the contour technique that you're using to remain, use large terrain objects such as hills, etc., cetera, to, to mask yourself from the enemy. At some point, we got to do a passage of lines and transition into enemy territory. And so this is where we would start, if, if these are forested areas, um, we would start using the terrain to hide our observation from the enemy. So we would transition down to NOE flight, use any and all uh, terrain masking features to um, get ourselves into our objective area. So we would get a lot slower and get a lot lower. And we would probably start uh, being really concerned about where the enemy is. So we would most likely transition into something called bounding overwatch. Uh, and bounding overwatch is where helicopter one, if both helicopters are uh, arriving to a mission area, one lead will call set. They will use sensors to scope out the area. And then at some point, the AMC is going to call, okay, trail this is lead. I'm going to conduct a bound forward, and he may transition to a new location. Um, and then call set. While that's happening, um, Trail will be observing his movement and also observing uh, near the objective area to see if anybody is reacting to his movement. Once the lead aircraft is set in his new position, um, he will call set and at that point pick up the observation sector and at that point most likely Trail will say, hey, I'm ready to move, so moving, and he will then move to a new location uh, and call set. And so that, that would be a mutually covering um, movement technique where only one aircraft is really moving at a time. So that kind of covers the fundamentals of terrain flight. Uh, obviously, there's always a lot more to it and uh, we train for it. Uh, and the difference between this type of flying and what we did, say, in a coin environment, uh, where we kind of have air dominance. We're not worried about high-tech systems, somebody with radars or optics observing us. It allows you to fly higher, and that's where uh, the team concept kind of came from, where you have a lead and a trail and an attack or recon uh, air weapons or scout weapons team. And uh, you may have a, whole, a low and a high aircraft, a low and a low aircraft. It all just depends on how the AMC wants to run the flight. But those are generally, you're always moving, you're never stopping. So uh, even when you're looking for stuff, you're, you're never really getting below bucket speed. So that's probably what a lot of people are used to. 
uh, when they think of helicopters operating in teams, uh, there's always a lead and a trail, and they're always moving, and uh, the trail ship is always covering the lead ship. And that differs a little bit from, from the Cold War era tactics that we're kind of getting back into these days. Uh, so what we want to do tonight is just kind of demonstrate this with a little mini mission. So we're going to start off in a secure area, fly um, using traveling and terrain flight to get to a transition point. And Brian's going to talk a little bit more about um, what's associated with how you make those decisions. And then we'll we'll go to a, a contour flight and then transition to uh, a traveling overwatch and then to a bounding overwatch. The way I used to always teach this is your transition is based a lot on the terrain, but it's also based on the enemy. If we've got our objective and we know that we've got this, you know, this enemy here, he's going to have different capabilities. We start thinking about what those capabilities are. So uh, not just uh, his ability to shoot, but also his ability to see how spread out is he. So, you know, if this is the objective, he's not just going to be sitting here. He's going to have forward elements that are going to be doing things out, out here and then particularly he's going to have some sort of reconnaissance assets forward. And so we got to start thinking about how far can they do things. So we've got this artillery here. We've got this scout here. So we start thinking about ranges. And let's say this is his direct fire range. So this is the part where he can throw missiles, he can shoot guns, whatever. And then we're going to have, you know, beyond that is his indirect fire range. And then probably somewhere just beyond that, he's going to have his observation, right? And the idea is that he's going to have somebody here that can see out to this far. He can start identifying targets, call it back to this guy. Now this guy can shoot. And then once he gets up into here, this is when you're getting into your, uh, you know, your, essentially your kill boxes where, where direct fire things are going to happen, your engagement area. So uh, the way I always kind of just looked at it is, is this is where you're going to start marking some transitions that happened in your maneuver. Hey, that's fancy. Um, and so, you know, it may be that, like, like you talked about, this is where I'm just flying, you know, terrain flight. Well, now I'm getting to this this area where he's going to start observing me, but I also want to keep my speed up because, uh, and this translates for ground as well as air, but, you know, I, I know guys who've been shot at with artillery in the air. Uh, during the invasion of Iraq. So you don't want to be kind of snooping around necessarily. You do want to kind of keep your speed up. So this could be an area where you are going to be at that, uh, you know, that contour flight where you can keep your speed up. And now you're getting into that direct fire area. So how do we mark these transitions? Well, we can use phase lines, right? And this is literally what it is, is a new phase, All right? So at phase line, you know, blue, this is the the line of departure. This is where we've we've sort of crossed into the mission area while we're flying our our whatever uh, speed that we want and, and avoiding terrain, you know, whatever. But now we start getting into these new phase lines. So let's say phase line blue. Now we're going to transition to contour, uh, and we're going to transition to instead of traveling. Now we're not traveling overwatch. So we're going to create a little bit more space between us, have a little bit better ability to react. And now we're getting up into these next phase lines, and now we're going to transition to uh, our bounding overwatch. So just a way to think about how to make those transitions, because otherwise, if you don't really put it into these terms, you, you kind of don't know when to do it. And you don't you don't naturally want to transition to a bounding overwatch until it's too late, right? You know, you're not really thinking about it because it's slow, and nobody wants to be slow until all of a sudden you're getting shot at, well, now it's too late. So you want to you want to find that good transition point. And understanding the enemy's capabilities, his ability out to reach uh, to reach out to you is is a good idea to think about it. Yeah, and, and the focus uh, initially, like when you're not so concerned about, um, you're, you're just wanting to get from A to B, conserve, you know, in the most expeditious manner. And then, like, uh, bounding Overwatch is not fast at all. It's, it's very yeah. slow. Yeah. yeah, it's boring to watch, but it's... Uh, saves lives all right well yeah so we're gonna jump in the cockpit and uh and we'll give it a go all right if you guys are ready i'll uh, talk you through the brief if you want to take a look at the uh, f10 map okay uh these are uh suspected uh enemy so we've got some nais at those points um what we'll do is we'll transition south uh pretty much remain uh, to the west of that road. So all those marks are on, on a road that's running down the, uh, through those little towns, break. 
So we'll kind of pick up that tree line as you can see there and, and work our way through those trees and, uh, and then take a look at those different locations. Okay, sounds good. And you're talking about that line of trees that runs roughly, I don't know, three, five, zero, um, just to the, yeah, okay, I see where you'd start there and then work that line of trees to the south. Yeah, Affirm, we'll just kind of stay on the uh, west side of those trees and uh, observe to the east onto those, uh, the north part of those little towns. Copy. All right, we'll uh, obviously be a left turnout departure and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go armed once we cross the uh, fence line. All right, one's coming up. Alright, fence checks and free cruise. Roger, free cruise. Okay, so free cruise means uh, everybody's kind of free to maneuver in about a 45 degree arc behind the aircraft in front of you. So where if uh, I'm looking at lead, I have about from here, and I can transition, I'm coming left, three, uh, over to about 45 degrees off the left quarter of the aircraft in front of me. It gives me a lot of freedom to maneuver. Um, the downside to this technique is that uh, the aircraft in front of me doesn't know which side of them I'm on. So if he had to break due to contact, um, he wouldn't know which way to break unless I told him first. So the kind of a modification of this is combat cruise where you pick one side of the arc and, and you have freedom to maneuver uh, as, you, as you want to, um, but you always stay from center line to one side of the aircraft in front of you. That way he always knows kind of where you are. And by the way, I'm staggered left off, you know. Copy. And that's kind of the good thing about uh, all the digital stuff is I can kind of tell where you are at in relation to me. So not a whole lot of uh, terrain features to go contour off of, pretty flat, but this will be kind of contour flight where we're just following the contours of the earth but we're not below the treetop level yet. Kind of cruising along at a constant set airspeed. Alright, cross the phase line. I'm going to dip down a little lower. We'll start slowing down to maintain a traveling overwatch. Alright, I'm going to cross this line of trees and start slowing and descending, and we'll uh, set at the next set of trees. My 11 o'clock. Okay, sounds good. We stack and left from you. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, why don't you continue on to that set of trees at my 11 o'clock, and 3, why don't you come over to my 2 o'clock. Copy 3. I don't think there's enough space behind these trees right now for all of us. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and pop up. You guys stay low level, and uh, see what I can see. All right, I have uh, contact the town. Uh, I don't think the angle's good for seeing our NAI, so we're gonna have to push a little bit forward. Break. Stand by two. I'll have you bound forward uh, to the next tree line. Let me just take a look at it real quick. All right, I'm at your one o'clock, about five hundred. I'm almost up to that tree line. Okay, uh, if you want to continue, it looks clear. I got you coming. Alright, two set. Copy. Uh, three, why don't you bound forward to the next tree line? Copy, three bounding. Three set. Copy. Once moving, I'll be uh, stacked right off of two. Alright, I'm looking in there. Uh, no contact. Copy. Copy. 
Alright, one is set. Three if you want to move up and stack at my uh, one o'clock. Copy three moving. One's unmasking. Alright, uh, two. Do you have any way you can bound over to s closer to the highway? Like your one, or correction, 11, 10 o'clock? Alright, two's bounding. Come in. And three, if you want to uh, unmask. I, I can see the entrance to the town, but there's a lot of trees. I think uh, two's probably going to have the best bet of finding something. Alright, I'm across this line of trees and start slowing and descending, and we'll uh, set at the next set of trees. My 11 o'clock. Okay, sounds good. Alright, I'm gonna uh, hold up here at this line of trees right off my nose. I'll uh, set right, correction, set left, stack right. Roger. Two is semi set. Roger, one's unmasking. And one has tally, one BMP. Stand by for mail. In the big town to about 180. A firm. It's uh, roughly at target 02. Check mail. Okay, yeah, I think I see him. Yep, if I'm, I got eyes on four. Observes the same. Okay, uh, let's get lined up on targets. Uh, I'll take the one on the left. Three, you take the one on the right. Two, you start in the center and work your way out. Three, target locked. Copy, one is locked. Two's red. Alright, just stand by, let me climb up just a little bit. This guy's kind of behind a little hill here. Alright, we'll engage in three, two, one, fire. One's rifle. Check. 
check on one. Yeah, my Vickers didn't shoot, so... Copy, I'm, uh, rifle on second from the left. Rifle on, uh, second from the right. Target destroyed. Good hit. Check. Wah, wah. Bum, 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 bum.